Okay, we're gonna do a frequency type mass airflow, uh, also known as a digital mass airflow sensor. And the connections that we're gonna use would be the red test lead connected to the mass airflow signal wire. And on this car, this is a GM, three wire mass airflow. The yellow wire is the signal wire. And one of the tricks that I do is, if you're unsure, is get your screen set up and probe the different wires most mass airflows, you got a power, a ground, and a signal. Of course, there are some other ones that have internal intake air temp sensors, so you have even maybe five or six wires. But in any case, you're looking for the wire that responds to throttle angle changes or airflow changes. So get your signal, snap the throttle, look for a changing signal. That is your signal wire. And of course, you can use wiring diagrams and things like that, but in our case, the yellow wire is the signal. It's a digital on-off, zero to five volt square wave. And what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna piggyback this. We're gonna do two channels for this, and I'll show you why. Um, because of the preloaded test that Pico's using. Um, so my second channel, I'm just gonna piggyback it. So we're gonna get two channels reading the same signal. And our black lead, we're gonna piggyback the grounds too. And I'm connected to a uh, known good ground which is my battery negative so two piggybacked grounds and two piggybacked channels and you see I'm connected to the to the battery right there with my black lead so we'll go up on the board now take a look okay so what we're gonna do we're gonna use the preloaded tests go to automotive go to sensors we're gonna do an airflow meter and in our case, a digital is the one we're using. And it gives you, again, a description, how to connect it. And we're using two channels. And you don't necessarily have to do it this way, but this is a method that can be done. Using two channels, we're going to piggyback the grounds, piggyback the signals. And you can see in this picture they're showing that, both the, uh, the red trace and blue trace using color-coordinated test leads. Those are nice. i got to get some of those. Um, and what they're showing uh, in this example would be this top picture does not look digital at all. This is a graphed frequency. This is something new the Pico 4000 can do, which is graph a frequency. You see channel A is set up on a frequency. And then channel B, this would be that signal, uh, its digital waveform. So this would be the conversion of this, how many times per second the signal is repeating itself and we're looking at both. A little bit of technical info, you can read that on your own. I'll go back, close the window. There's our preset scales. And hit the green trace that's now running. Go ahead and start the car. We might have to adjust these levels a little bit. And what, what the preset is right here, um, you see our trigger that's set up here and it's on a repeat. So one of the preset features with this one is they actually have a, a trigger uh, setting already. You can turn that off if you want to, but what that's gonna do, and the reason it's set that way, is our trigger set up up here um, at about 5,000 hertz. And so when we do a snap throttle test, it's gonna draw that picture, and right now that frequency is just above 2,000. Um, it will only draw the rest of that when it crosses that threshold. So can I get you to snap the throttle for me on that? And as soon as we hit that 5,000 threshold, it's going to draw the rest of that picture and freeze it on there. And it'll draw the rest of the way and it should freeze it. Okay, it didn't. On a single shot, it will. If I change this to a single, snap it again. And it'll draw it the rest of the way and freeze the picture. So that, this would be a graphed frequency of what's going on down here. You could zoom in on that and take a look, see what kind of detail we got here, that you can see that this red trace is actually an on-off digital signal. The reason it looks so uh, crowded together is it's too long of a time base to actually see that. I'm gonna drop this down. There's 10 milliseconds, drop it down to one millisecond. Gives you a little bit better idea of what that's looking like. Can you snap the throttle for me? You see our frequency line increase. 
You see these square waves get tighter? I'm going to take that down even more, 200 microseconds. Set a trigger up uh, on channel. I'm going to trigger actually on B this time. So I'm triggered off channel B to make that, that on off digital signal kind of sit still so you can see it, got it snapped the throttle. You see them getting tighter, that's what happens. Frequency's increasing and it's very difficult to see peak frequency on this kind of scale. And that's why this blue trace is so nice to have it that frequency graph for you and plot it on a graph is wonderful. So I'm gonna get back off of that I'm going to go back to channel A, I'm going to trigger on A, and we're going to take our time base and go back to 500 milliseconds per division. Really channel B for, for the rest of this, I, I don't really need it. Um, we can turn that off if we want to get that thing out of the picture and we can focus on this blue trace. Again, this is a graph frequency. This car's got a rev limiter. That's what that is. So that initial spike is important to me. I like that picture. Let's go back and look at that one. And judging other GMs, this uh, mass airflow is a little bit dirty. We should be hitting about 8,500 hertz on this. And uh, cleaning this mass airflow probably wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, so I pulled this mass airflow out of the vehicle. And I'm going to show how to clean this design. Um, I haven't been able to show that yet, and I have the opportunity, so why not? Uh, first thing is, you see the, the screen on the front. This is a honeycomb type screen. And, and one of the things about these honeycomb type screens is you don't want to touch it. You don't want to bend it. You don't want to take it out. We don't want to damage it. It ensures proper airflow measurements. It straightens the air out and ensures that every column of air is the same flow rate. So it kind of eliminates that Venturi effect that you're going to have when air passes through a narrow area. Don't touch the screen. So when you clean these, we want to go from the back side. I'll show you the back side of it and show you the three resistors that are on this one. And, and you can see them, and you got one, you got one here, you got one here, and one there. And what we wanna do is we wanna clean all three of those. One of them is the hot wire, and I'm, an, I'm not exactly sure which one it is. I never really worried too much about it. I just clean all three. And the way that you tell when they're dirty is you look at the back side of them, and you compare that to what the front side of them looks like. And that's, this is the side that gets dirty. And there's no way I'm gonna pick that up on my camera here to show you the, the, how black these front ones are. I mean, I've seen them a lot worse, but. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not worried again about the screen. You can clean the screen off if you want to. Uh, one of the things I don't want is I don't want this brake clean getting up into this electrical area up here. So I always hold it with that at the top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray right where those three resistors are. And again, you can clean the honeycomb if you want to. That's really not important. Like that's gonna get dirty anyway. It's the hot wire that you wanna get clean. So I got it sprayed. And the next thing I do is I spray my brush and I get, I get some stuff on my brush. And I take it again from the back side and I'm going to take that brush and I'm going to wipe these contaminants off of here being very gentle I just found this to be the most effective way to clean this design I mean a lot of people might try to dig that honeycomb screen out of there I'm telling you not to touch it had a student take one of those screens out thinking his car is going to run better and he had a rough idle and fuel trim issues at idle speeds he couldn't get rid of put the screen back in and all was well that thing's there for a reason if it's a screen like on your screen door those are just for debris they're not air straighteners like the honeycomb style so now that i brushed it spray it one more time make sure this thing is very dry before you put it back in the vehicle 
don't put this back in the vehicle wet. You'll have an issue. You can ruin it. And that's it. We'll let it dry and we'll put it back in the car and see our after results. All right, so we just cleaned this mass airflow uh, and we're going to see if we get a little bit different frequency number. I'm looking for hopefully 8,500 hertz is the number I use on these GMs. And of course, you can go back through your automotive stuff. Um, I have the same scale set up so we can just start it where it's at. Get it fired up. First thing you're going to notice right now, as opposed to what we had before, I'm now using the sensor ground instead of battery ground, and you can see that this signal's a lot cleaner. You got to snap it a couple times, and that looks good. That looks good for our frequency, and again, this red trace, we would use this red trace more if we had a wiring problem or some kind of signal that didn't look right. Um, as far as is this sensor operating properly? Is it dirty or not? Our graph frequency is key. And so uh, this guy, we can either just move him out of the way or we can turn him off. I'm just gonna turn it off. We're gonna focus on our blue trace, which is our graph frequency. Um, I'm gonna take this time base because I want to see more than 10 milliseconds. I like a five second screen for a graph frequency. So. I'm going to set that to 500 milliseconds per division, and again, this is going to be personal preference. And we'll do a couple of snap throttle shots. We can do single trace, we can do repeat, we can do no trigger at all. This has a buffer so we can go back and look at it. Now the thing about this rev limiter that's on this car, it's kind of going to limit the peak that I can get as far as RPM. So that first initial snap is key to me. You know, I don't, I don't want to rev it slowly. I want, it, I want it to rev very fast. That initial gulp of air is important to me. It's hard to do on this car. See a peak on that. Yeah, we're still not hitting what I want to on this car. I did look real, real close. I didn't throw a measurement up there. I know we were real close to 8,000 before. It looks like we're uh, we're right in that range where we were before. So on this car, uh, our, our cleaning did nothing for improvement on this. But at least procedure-wise, uh, that's what you're looking for. Um, I used that 8,500 hertz number. It's pretty standard. There are some variables to that. Um, I'd like to see this one a little bit higher, but there are some other factors that can affect how an engine breathes. You can have exhaust restrictions, intake restriction that can limit the peak of this number, but it was still a good demonstration on connecting up to a mass airflow on this design, the graft frequency, the digital signal, and then how to clean it. Uh, one other thing that I, I didn't catch and I should have, um, maybe I'll go back and look in the video. I know I didn't freeze it. But this initial gulp of air, if you notice when I was doing this part, I was letting the car idle all the way back down, which is emptying the manifold of pressure. And then do a very, very rapid snap. And the reason I wanted to do rapid is that initial gulp of air is important to me to know uh, if this mass airflow is dirty or not, it, it, especially when you have a rev limiter like this car has. So I really can't quite hit red line to see peak airflow. And I believe, and I'm not positive, I believe that this spike is higher than what it was before we cleaned this mass airflow. I'm not positive on that, but I think it is. So we may have had an improvement on this. I'm not going to see a peak higher up here because I'm hitting my rev limiter on this car, but that initial spike becomes even more important when you have a rev limiter. And again, the key with that, let the car idle all the way back down 
empty the manifold, rapid snap as fast as you can to get that initial spike.